All right, let's lock in. First thing that I want to talk about today is obviously what's making the most rounds in the news currently. And to all the Raiders fans who ran up that video, who said me and Noah were stupid and crazy and this, that, and the third, you're not even five weeks into the season. Antonio Pierce is a mess, liking things on Instagram, claiming that him and Tay, Tay said him and Antonio Pierce don't talk, um, calling out players. Business decisions. Business decisions. The Antonio Pierce era in Las Vegas, although they're two and two, is already completely under fire. And a big part of that and big thing that's going on currently is Tay Adams has requested a trade. He said he hurt his hamstring. Obviously, we all knew that was cap. And he has requested a trade. And his top two teams are apparently the Saints and the Jets. Um, First, I want to get your opinion on the situation and then i'm going to bring up some teams and get get your uh reaction to that to that so what do you think about the tay adams news and the raiders um i mean i feel like it was only a matter of time until he kind of figured out a way to get out of this situation um we could see periodically throughout the end of last year and then through the first few games this year that he just hasn't been happy in las vegas um so it's not really surprising. I know that this was that the Devontae Adams saga in Las Vegas was kind of like a situation that people were monitoring this offseason um, as potentially somebody that was going to be traded at a very at a point in the season. Um, and, and it probably came a little bit sooner than people imagined. Um, I think it's also worth noting here that. Um, before we get into like any of the potential landing spots or unrealistic landing spots, I think it's worth noting that as of today, a trade for Devonte Adams would be that team would be required to take on 13 and a half million dollars. And then that number would go down by just under a million each week that he's not traded. Um, that's according to over the cap. And then the uh, trade deadline is, is the 5th of November. So um, we have about a month until the official trade deadline. So I obviously think it happens before quicker that. Than that. Um, something of note, which I understand what you were doing here, but I want to see uh, I want to see what, so you said, yeah, the 13 million, but then 2025 yeah, the 2025 is significant. Goes up to... 30-some, and same thing in 26. Goes up to $35 million, and then yep. again, $35 million again. Um, so, yeah, that number that you said is true for this season, but taking on a 30... Uh, he would be age 33, age 34 season for Devontae Adams. He's going to be making $35 million a pop. Um, unless if you can get him to agree to tamper off that deal or like restructure it. But I don't see why you would restructure it if you're Tay. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. And it's it's quite literally your your last big contract in the NFL. Well, you could restructure it in a way that it doesn't hit the cap at 36 and 35 in those two years. Um, it would have to be a pretty significant restructure, but it can be done. But I'm th- I'm just saying strictly from his his salary standpoint, I don't see him being like flexible. This is his last big contract. Um, he probably wants every dollar of it. Is that fair I agree. Say? Yeah, yeah, I completely yeah. agree with you. Um, but um, restructuring it doesn't mean that you would necessarily lose that money. Um, well, it could. it could. It could. It's not yeah. a. It's not a guarantee, though. But I don't think he's going to have a choice because he doesn't have a no trade clause, so he can go wherever. But I would assume a lot of these teams coming into that would would um, want some type of confirmation that he's willing to work on a re like to work on a restructured deal um prior to them trading for him 
Otherwise, yeah, I don't know. absolutely no sense to, for any of these teams, even if you, they need a wide receiver to trade for him. Well, ultimately, that's what we're about to do is just talk about, like, I have two teams that I think are absolutely unrealistic, and then I have two teams that think that it makes a ton of sense. Um, so that's that's really the conversation. Yes, you're right. A lot of these teams are not going to be in the market for Tay Adams. That's the point. Um, yep. So I think that, like, I really think that there's only a few teams that are even in question, and I think everybody else we can pretty much throw out. Um, the first two that I don't know if, like, we talk about this a lot. I don't know if it's, like, the media just, like, loving the fact that, like, talking about the Buffalo Bills and talking about the, the Kansas City Chiefs get the most clicks, but it makes absolutely zero sense for the Chiefs to go and trade for Tay Adams. First, first thing of note, they are the Raiders and the Chiefs are in the same division. Why would they trade an interdivision rival, like arguably like the, one of the best receivers of like the 2010s, the late 2010s, um, who are going for a three P in their own division? Next, the Chiefs have invested so much resources into their wide receiver position. They spent a first on Rasheed Rice. They spent a first on Xavier Worthy. They go out and get a Hollywood Brown. I They pay like Noah Gray. They pay K Travis Kelsey for their tight end room. That's a lot of – they already have invested a lot of resources into their into their room. Um, it may have – it might not look great right now because of injury, but like I don't see them – for seeing them wanting to spend more resources on a really expensive old wide receiver, it just doesn't really make too much sense for to me at least on the other side of things, the bills just got out of the business of Stefan Diggs. They didn't want to pay a 30 plus year old expensive ass wide receiver and wanted to shift their offensive identity to something different than having a number one wide receiver. So why in the world would they go and trade for De Devontae Adams? Both of those teams make absolutely zero sense to me. And of course the media is extremely annoying and that's the only two teams that they have really brought up and the ones that of note. And I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. I actually have both of those teams on my unrealistic spots for basically the same reason that you did. Um, whenever one of those two teams doesn't have a number one wide receiver and there is a disgruntled wide receiver that is looking to be traded, they're automatically going to get brought up in discussions. Um, so that's just like something that is going to happen until Mahomes and Josh Allen are no longer in the NFL. Um, another team that I have on here for an unrealistic spot that Tay Adams, I don't know if he directly came out and said it, but I don't think it's realistic for him to go to the saints either. Um, Real quick, and I'm sorry, you can keep talking. Uh, the Chiefs would have a wide receiver one if it wasn't for that dumbass Patrick Mahomes Correct. running like a four-year-old into yeah. Rasheed Rice's knee. But go ahead, keep going. Yeah, I mean, I can go back to that for a second too. You're completely right with the with both points that you made. the The Buffalo Bills just got out of a situation where they are no longer number one receiver; they are wide receiver by committee. And although they just got stomped by the Ravens, it's worked out pretty well for them thus far. Um, Chiefs, like you said, they've they've put in a ton of money to to this wide receiver room, um, and a Rasheed Rice, a healthy Rasheed Rice, moving forward is ultimately going to be better than a 33, 34 year old um, Devontae Adams. I completely agree. Um, but yeah, back to my point about the Saints. One of the things that I think Devontae Adams said is he wants to go and play for a team where he knows where he's played with the quarterback. So that really rules it down to two teams in the yeah. Jets and the the Saints. I don't think the Saints are a realistic situation because of how limited they are in their cap situation. This year they only have 3.2 million in cap space. They might I like Rich, I like Chris Olave and um shit, who's the other guy? Rashid Shahid. Rashid, Rashid Shahid. But I don't think that them putting Devontae Adams in this situation is going to make them a legitimate Super Bowl contender. And if you're going to be stuck with him 
at that number for 25 and 26, it makes no sense to me, especially if their cap space this year is only at 3.2 million. That's going to take a lot of restructuring internally in order for him to just fit for this season. Um, Have you considered, have you considered that the saints are incredibly stupid? I don't asking. think I have, and that led me to my thought of I don't think they're smart enough to be able to restructure and open up enough cap space for Devontae Adams for this season. That's fair, but I will say that it would be like the least shocking thing ever for the the Saints who started off the season well, but I think are going to tamper off for them to go and get like Devontae Adams. It would make the most sense, like because they're just make a dumb decision. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. I don't um, think they're even smart enough to get to making the dumb decision. Um, no, I agree with that. So I think there's a ton of teams that we can rule out. Uh, Steelers, uh, like why, why I actually, would he, why would he I actually go have that? I actually have the Steelers on my teams that I could see him going to. And I have, I have a so couple reasons you, why you, so the reason, all right, real quick, the reason that he doesn't want to play in Vegas is because he doesn't have a quarterback that can throw him the football. And then the first week that he rolls out with the Pittsburgh Steelers and he has three catches for 20 yards, he's literally going to erupt. I look at it this way because he doesn't have that no trade clause. So if the Steelers offer what the Raiders are looking for, and I think they were looking for what, like a second round pick. If the Steelers are dumb enough to go out there and offer a second round pick to the Raiders for Devontae Adams, go for it. See, I this is what this is where I think this is what I personally think. Tay has two teams he wants to play for. That's it. The Steelers like, also it, need another receiver. But it so doesn't, that's the only other reason. Well, they like, but this is what I'm saying. Tay won't play football. He's not playing football right now. Like if he if he goes to a team that he if there's a team that wants to trade for him and it gets out, he could quite literally just be like, Yeah, I'm not playing for you guys. Like that that he for, he has a ton of leverage in this situation. He doesn't want to play for the Raiders and he only wants to play for two teams. Like, so I, I think that it's really it's that simple. Like, I think that his agent obviously is involved. And I think that like if somebody like like if the Panthers were like, yep, we'll trade a second for for you right now. He'll just be like, OK, like I just won't play football. And I think the Steelers are on that list of where he's just like, I'm not going to play football if that's who I have to play for. What is like the weekly fine for not playing? I just or don't can you think just he keep ca- saying you can. Can you just keep saying like, yeah, I'm hurt. I just don't think he cares. I don't know the situation fully, but like, I just don't think he gives a shit. Like he is in the window now where he just like I am yeah. playing he the wants last to go and win. Yeah. one to two to three years of my career. Like I need to go and win. Like I'm not in this and I and I want to have eight to ten targets a game. That's the that's the issue. Like it's not like, oh, like I want to play winning football and like and like be a part of a good team and like do this, this that in the third. No, like Tay wants to get fed the ball 14 times in a game. Like that's what he wants to do. So I, I really, I think that like whatever mold that looks like um, is, is what it is. Um, the two teams that I have written down here are the Ravens and the Jets. Um, the Ravens, I think is a little bit more far fetched, but the Jets, Joe Douglas, your, your job is on the clock. If you guys do not go to an AFC championship game this year, you are fired spend the second round pick fuck throw in a fourth round pick too because if you don't win this year you're not going to be there to use those picks anyway so go yeah. out get tay that's where he wants to go that's where aaron Rodgers wants him to be the whole team during the preseason was talking about tay coming to new york Brees hall said it in an interview Rodgers said it tay said it in an interview uh it's the most obvious link up of all time it's really just about them pulling the trigger and if you are joe douglas and the jets what why not i mean like if you do not win a super bowl this year that whole building's fired or if you're not in an afc championship or win a playoff game that building is gone yeah win a playoff game is probably the bare minimum, bare minimum. yeah the bare minimum there um 
I actually had the Ravens on here as an unrealistic spot because their GM just came out what not too long ago and was like, it would be really tough for us to go in here and add another contract in this um, in their current situation. Um, I just think that if your GM's coming out and saying that, then it's probably not probably not going to happen. But it could be smoke and mirrors because I do. If if I wouldn't have seen that report, I would completely agree with you that the Ravens would be a legitimate landing spot for them or well, for just, him. But he also isn't going to get 14 targets a game there either. I think that the Ravens, I just think it's a little different. Like, I think he'll get fed more there because they need, they desperately need a wide out, obviously. Um, and on top of that, like, the Ravens are already big game hunting. Like, they went out and got Derrick Henry. Like, it wouldn't shock me if they went out and got Tay Adams, too, and just, like, fuck it. Like, we're going to give Lamar, like, two two serious weapons and just, like, see what happens and, like, say, screw it. Because um, I think the Ravens are starting to feel a little bit of heat as well from, from like, getting it done, like, in the postseason. Um, another team that obviously is, like, Dallas Cowboys. For uh, realistic or unrealistic? Realistic. Like, I have them I, as an unrealistic team. I think that this offseason, like – Jerry Jones got like absolutely rolled through the mud. Um, he didn't get Derrick Henry, which was like obviously like a massive, massive mistake. And then now he's just like sitting there and has just been getting clowned ever since he said that he was all in. And I could see them very realistically being like, all right, fuck it. Like we're going to go get Tay and then figure this out, everything out later. Um, so that those are the three teams that I could see it happening with or the Ravens the Cowboys and then the Jets. Um, I think probably the Ravens are third on that list and then the Jets are first and then the Cowboys are second. But that's really who the three teams who I think are in the market for Tay right now. Because they're the teams that are like, if you look at those, the way that they're set up is like, we need to win a Super Bowl. Like we have the team to do it, especially the Cowboys. Like the Cowboys are like desperate to get over the hump. Um, and I just think that those three teams kind of fit the mold for who, who, who Tay would also want to play for as well. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm looking at it from kind of like a, like you're looking at it through like the desperation, like we need this player lens, I think, which I think that's very fair. Um, the Cowboys and the Ravens both fit the mold as two teams that would benefit immediately from having another like really good wide receiver in Devontae Adams. Um, the reason I had the Cowboys as an unrealistic team is because um, they just paid CD. They just paid Dak. They're going to have to figure out how to pay Micah Parsons. Um, so I don't think from like a draft capital standpoint, um, it's in their best interest necessarily to go and, and trade away pieces that they can use in the draft because I think that they're going to have to realistically rely heavily on the draft these next few years because of how expensive those three guys are going to be on their team are going to be in the next couple of years. But other than that, I mean, I, I, I think like money aside, the Cowboys fit. Mon they, they have the money to do it over the next three seasons. Um, and so do the Ravens. I'm just telling you what their GM said. I, I'm just Ra looking. Ravens. I'm looking. I know, I know they all do. Yeah, I know I'm that they all right have now. the cap space to do it. Everybody's I able think, to do it. I just think that, like, I, I think that, like, what we're talking about right now is, like, like, this is, like, I don't know where Tay's at in his career personally, but this is, like, adding – like a potential top 10 wide receiver to your team, which I ultimately don't think that matters as much as everybody else does. But for those teams listed, I think it matters a ton. I have a, um, a dark horse team. And I, I told you earlier that I was at the Rosillo show last night and um, I didn't say this part, but Chris Long was there for like the entire show. Um, and the Devonte Adams situation came up and Chris Long provided two teams that, um, neither one of us have mentioned yet. So, and I want to see like what you think. 
So the two teams that he mentioned outside of the guys that we already did were the Commanders and the Lions. Yeah, I heard I heard that as well. I heard multiple people say that. Um, the Lions, like we'll talk about it on the Monday night recap. Like what what I just feel like what why interrupt the chemistry? Um, I agree. And the commanders, the only point that I have in that situation is like their timelines are off. Like Tay, like, like I like I'm getting at, like I keep saying, like Tay wants to play for a quarterback that he knows, which is two, and he wants to win a Super Bowl. The commanders aren't close, aren't going to be close to winning a Super Bowl. And second, it's a quarterback that they don't know. The reasoning why I have quarterbacks on my list, such as like Dak and Lamar, is because they're proven Proven. veterans that have done it for years and years and know that like Tay knows what he's getting out of those guys. I think that if you told Tay that he was going to the commanders from the Raiders, it would be the exact, it would be a lateral move in his mind. So I, I don't think that, he would go to the commanders. I'm just trying to put myself into the commander's front office as to why you would make that trade. And the only thing that I came up with was they think they're much further ahead of schedule. And they think that Jaden Daniels is in fact the real deal. And the rest of the NFC East um, looks bad. And they feel like they have a legitimate shot if they go out there and they add another um, significant weapon to this offense. A legitimate That's the shot only thing at I, winning the division, winning the division, and maybe winning a playoff game. I, that would be the again, only possible I, reason again, as to why I think that they would would go out there and make this move. Um, but other than that, I I can't I, think. Of I'm not looking else. at. I'm just not looking at this from team perspective, like the team's point of view. This is what Tay Adams wants. This isn't. I know. This isn't like oh like. Let's get like, uh, oh, like shit. Like, let's go grab him because he'll be good for our young quarterback. Like, it's like Tay will be like, I'm not playing there. That's really what I think is going on right now. Fair. Yeah. I mean, that's I, what he's doing in Vegas. Like, he's yeah. doing the exact same thing in Vegas. Like, you guys suck. We don't have a shot. I'm not playing here. Like, the commanders, like, I view that they might be off to a hot start. Jaden Daniels might be the real deal. All of the above. But, like, nobody is looking at the commanders as like a Super Bowl team right now, like at all. And they least not through four weeks. No. Yeah. I, 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 I'm glad that you looked at it through Devonte Adams and I was more so looking at it through like the player or through like the team perspective, because I think that far too often we don't really like, like people don't really take into consideration like both sides of things. Um, so I'm glad you looked at it that he's just way. A, he's just the only reason I'm saying all this is like, I don't believe in the empowerment in player, the player empowerment in the NFL that heavy. But when you have a 32 year old wide receiver who is going to make 13 mil next year, his age 33 season is going to make 35 his age 34 season is going to make 35. It's just a completely different situation than like, let's say a Brandon Ayuk situation where if you look at Brandon Ayuk, he was literally like, I'll play for three teams. I'll play for the Steelers. I'll play for, I forget the other team at this time, or the 49ers. And everybody else is pretty much out of the race. And that was yeah. somebody who was in their mid-20s, who was not on a contract, who knew that he had to get paid. This is somebody on an expensive contract who, and I really, like, everybody's sitting around and saying, like, it's going to be a second. It's going to be a second. Um I think that they're comparing it to like the digs deal. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. And that's what um, I think the Raiders like tossed out there as what they were. I think he's going to go, not gonna end up being a second. I think he's going to go for significantly less. And you'll see like fans of teams being like, oh, why did we, swindled. why did, why did we not grab Tay for a four? Correct. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like that kind of shit where like, it always happens. Like we were like, wait, what? Like, Okay, so the Raiders will fold because nobody's going to actually give them a second round pick for a 31 about to be 32 year old with double the salary hit in the next two years. Yeah. And somebody I listened to somebody today say 
well, the, the Chiefs should just offer their first because it's going to be number thirty-two anyway, and like just give them the get just give them the first. Like, that's so lazy. That's such I'm a like, lazy. Take. I'm like, why, why in the world would the Raiders trade Tay Adams? To the like, like nobody that's is not sitting around and like trying to do the Chiefs any favors. Like, not at all. Not at all. I um, another team that I had on here uh, as unrealistic that I was seeing like getting tossed around as potential was was the Chargers. Um, they could use a wide receiver, but like it doesn't fit for them either. Like they're trying they got, to eliminate all this dead cap space. Like they just got rid of space. Yeah, like they yeah. just got rid of two old expensive wide receivers. Why would yeah. the in the first five weeks of the season they go and add the same thing? It just I thought the same thing when I saw it. I was like, that makes stupid. no sense. And then the last thing I want to talk about, and then we can move it on move on is just the trade market in general. Like I'm I'm hearing like Deontay Johnson's gonna get moved, Christian Kirk's gonna get moved, DeAndre Hopkins is gonna get moved. That never happens in the middle of the season ever. Maybe, maybe one of those guys will get moved. Maybe. maybe. And so I don't understand why. Like I think like the NFL media is trying to make it kind of like what the NBA media is Correct. because the NBA media obviously is like blessed with an active trade line, but at the trade deadline. But we talk about this all the time inserting somebody into an offense mid season is way harder than people think coming back full circle is exactly why I think Tay just goes to the jets because he knows so the exact offense that they're running him and Rogers have amazing chemistry already. It's not something that needs to get taught and he can walk in there week one and be an impact player for them. I think that's the only team that makes full sense. And I think that that's ultimately what we watch go down. Yeah, I, I completely agree. They were my number one landing spot. They have the draft capital. They have the cap space. Um, they meet the criteria of, did Devontae Adams play with his quarterback before? Um, I think it's just a matter of time until we see that um, that trade, trade happen. All right, so let's go for the Monday Night Recap. Titans, Dolphins, nothing to talk about. Um Wait, wait, wait. We were uh, we hit the over on the Will Levis meme. Yeah, right away in the first right quarter. Right away, right away. I texted it to you and you were like, no way. I was like, yeah, it was that <laughs> it was that quick. Um next next thing that we need to talk about is the Detroit Lions, Seattle Seahawks in like literally a cool ass game. Um, Jared Goff went 18 for 18, 292 yards and two touchdowns. Thank God he was indoors. Ultimately, what is going to be completely unsaid in this situation is the the Lions like legitimately have like maybe the best run game I've ever seen in my entire life. And Demont and Jameer Gibbs are both top 10 running backs in the NFL. And having the ability to lean on those guys in times of need is going to take a ton of pressure off of Jared Goff and they did that perfectly the other night. And when you watch all of their playmakers and Jared Goff, when they're clicking on a high level like that, they're definitely the most fun team of football. Jameson Williams had a big touchdown. Uh, Almar St. Brown threw a touchdown to Jared Goff. Uh, Jameer Gibbs scored a touchdown. Demont scored a touchdown. They're just a really good football team when they're clicking on all levels. Um, on the other side of things, Gino went 38 of 56 or 395, a touchdown and interception. Gino literally was just airing it the fuck out and did yeah. not care. <laughs> he, he and did it was not. it was so fun to watch. And both of these teams are really good. And ultimately, I think these are two teams who are going to be playing deep into the playoffs as as long as they both stay healthy. Uh, they're both phenomenal football teams. The Seahawks had a ton of injuries on their defensive line and their edge rushers, and it really showed, but they still fought the entire time and amazing game. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much summed up all my notes that Sorry. I had. Um, the, the Lions heard the game plan that I gifted them on the last episode of don't have Jared Goff throw the ball more than 20 times and just hand it off to your running backs and you'll be just fine saw how that played out um the jameer gibbs uh david montgomery combo is like lendale white and reggie bush back at usc they're Um, so good it's crazy and what like you said when this offense is clicking on all cylinders 
it's one fun to watch and two insanely difficult to stop. Um, and this kind of goes back to the to the Devonte Adams situation where if the Lions offense looks like that, there's no need for them to add another player in there and and just mess things up. I mean, no Amon Ross St. Brown is phenomenal. Jameson Williams looks better almost every week thus far into the season. You still have Laporta out there as one of the best tight ends in the NFL. And then you have the two headed monster at running back. I mean, there's not really another like th- there's no reason to bring in another mouth to feed in that offense. Um, Zero. And I and I think it's just going to get better as we see, like as the season goes goes by. And then on the on the flip side of things, the Seahawks offense is is scary too. Um, one of the things that I I texted to to Tyler during this game was both of these teams would beat the absolute shit out of the Eagles, and yeah. it would be painful to watch. Um, but it was fun as hell to watch this game. Um, and I agree with you. I think we see both of these teams playing deep into the playoffs. Um, a thing that you didn't mention was Kenneth Walker. Um, that guy's a freak show. Yeah. Um, I, I love watching him play. He is tough to tackle and he is just a gritty running back that actually moves too. He was up to like 21 miles per hour on the one play on the one touchdown run that he had. Um, and, and he's bald. Is he doing that on purpose? Yeah. Yeah, he's on his Adrian Peterson. He's just crazy. Yeah, he's a freaking dog, man. I I, I love that guy. Um, this was a really fun game to watch. Honestly, might have been one of the most fun games to watch this year. For sure. Okay. Thursday Night Football, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. Line is one and a half. The total is 43 and a half. Um, I'm not picking sides for... Thursday night football games. I said that already this year, but I will be giving a touchdown score for this football game. I've hit the last two. I hit CD lamb last week. I hit Garrett Wilson the week before. And this week I'm going to go B John Robinson, anytime touchdown score. It's really just like, oh, I'm dude. going with the people who are just due on Thursday night football. So B John Robinson, anytime touchdown score. Ultimately, I don't have much opinion of this game other than, I would probably just like to continue to see the Atlanta Falcons offense grow. Yeah. I, uh, I think if there is anybody that's absolutely due in this, in this situation, it, it, it is Bijan. Um, I have the bucks in one of my, my parlays for this weekend for a million dollar picks. Um, so I, hundred thousand dollar picks, hundred thousand dollar, whatever, whatever, uh, whatever Brady said whatever yeah whatever brady said but yeah i i do have the bucks in in my parlay for this one but um yeah i, th- I think Bijan's do and i think that that's probably a safe bet definitely max um we have 9 30 in the morning best time of the year when the game start this early the new york jets at the minnesota vikings um Lines two and a half. The total is 40 and a half. These games are always wonky overseas. So ultimately, like the under is probably good. They're playing at a weird time. They both get over there at a weird time. But I absolutely, for some reason, just love the Jets in this spot just because everybody's so high on the Vikings. Everybody thinks they're the best team in the NFL. The Jets just went out last week and lost to the Broncos 10 to 9. And the line is two and a half. And like, it just feels like they're like, please take the Vikings. Like, please take them at two and a half. We're not even going to give you three. So that's, I really just like the Jets to win this game out, right? I don't have either one of these in, in, in any of my picks. I ended up taking an alternate under at 47 and a half for this game. Um, it's originally sits at 40 and a half, but I think you're right. I think that, I think the Vikings are a good and are a good football team. But they're they gotta lose at some point. Um, and what's like weirder than going to London and playing at nine thirty in the morning? Um, not a whole lot. Um, I, I like your pick of the Jets. I'm not gonna actually bet on this game on the Jets or the Vikings, but it feels like this is a situation where the Jets need to actually bounce back after a horrible loss last week. No doubt. Um. I'm going to scroll through a few of these games. Uh, The one o'clock game, 
the, the Buffalo Bills at the Houston Texans. The line is at one and a half. The total is at 47 and a half. Um, on paper, this game looks great. Um, the Texans just aren't good. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't everybody, like, you can look at what's like CJ Stroud threw for like 345 yards last week. And if you like look at their box score, it's like, oh, like CJ Stroud balled. Um, I, I just think that their offensive line's awful. Larry Me Tunsil gets a million false starts a game, a million holding calls. Like their offensive line's brutal. Uh, CJ Stroud's constantly under duress. And I just think that like the Bills defense is going to come out with a great game plan and shut them down. And I, I think the Bills are looking to bounce back after getting shit smacked smacked by the by the Ravens. And like, I don't know. I just really I just think the Bills in a bounce back spot against the Texans, like I feel like all the Texans games this season are like low key super misleading unless if you if you just look at the box score. Yeah. Uh Laramie Tunsil wears way too much designer clothing um to be that to be a good and to be a good tackle. I know he's good, but if he wouldn't wear this much designer, I think he'd be better. Yeah, um, he's, he's fresh. He's also bald as hell too. That is true. Bald, bald watch. <laughs> bald head nut um yeah i i think that this is a bounce back game for the bills too um i know i picked them at their mon- at minus one and a half against the ravens last week that was just stupid because the ravens are so much better than their than their record just dis- like displayed at one and two um i'm right there with you like i'm just not seeing what i need to see out of the texans yet so i think it's a safe pick against them when they're playing a team that I'm very confident is better than them um, in the Buffalo Bills. So um, I like the Bills in this one. Um, I think they're going to look to bounce back. And if unless the, if the Texans can't get any type of run game going um, and they just have to chuck the ball around, this game might end up being over 47 and a half. Yeah, I agree with that. Next game is another one o'clock game. They, they fucked up, had all the games too early, all the good games too early. Uh, Baltimore Ravens at Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, the Ravens are favored on the road by two and a half points. The total is 48 and a half. Um, what do you think? Like, obviously like the Ravens are probably like the right pick, but like, I, I just feel like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Like, well, are we still, I think the Bengals still suck, but I'm always cautious in spots like this this feels like a um week where everyone bets on the ravens and it's the week that the Bengals offense goes out there and just puts up like 42 points somehow yes. like jamar chase just has like 10 catches for like 130 and two touchdowns and t higgins ends up having like six catches for 70 and a touchdown and they just some they go out there somehow and win the game like 42 35 because Baltimore can't close out a game if they aren't like that Baltimore struggles to close out a game. Um, Add T Higgins to my card touchdown. I, I actually, I actually have Jamar chase touchdown as well. Um, I don't know what the actual line is for it yet, but we'll see at, at a later date. Um, but yeah, the, everything is screaming Baltimore Ravens. They're trending in the right direction. They just beat the piss out of the Bills. Like They're playing so much better football. But I think ultimately what ends up happening in these AFC North matchups is they end up finding a way to split one of the two meetings. And I think that this might be the one where it's in Cincinnati. The Bengals, although they just played the Panthers have looked better the last two weeks than the first two weeks. Um, so I, 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 I think I like the Bengals plus two and a half. I don't have anything on this game, but you're like, I don't know. And then, dude, honestly, the rest of the games is just like, like the Green Bay Packers Rams, like would have been a good game if everybody was healthy. It's a lot um, of, I like a lot of could be really good football games. And then ultimately the 820 game at night, Dallas Cowboys. What a, what a shitter. At the Steelers. Honestly, like... The no, Steelers no, I'm talking are, about the other one. Oh. Go ahead. Uh, two and a half point favorites. Total is 44 and a half. Honestly, like, this is like... This might be, like, one of the most iconic matchups, like, that we've seen in a while. Like, these two uniforms 
colliding or like is like such a throwback super bowl matchup type vibes so i'm Old excited i actually like am low-key excited for that game but i, 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 I don't was know. referring to the to the chief saints game but that's not until monday i got a, i got a little ahead of myself yeah, way um, ahead of yourself but that's all right is there um, any games that I miss that you want to talk about or add on to the D- Dallas Steelers games? Like the games this week are just, you know, like there's some bye weeks this week. Detroit's on a bye. Chargers are on a bye. Philly's on a bye. The the Will Levises are on a bye. So like we're just like we're not getting our top talent. Um, do you have a pick for this Cowboys Steelers game? Nah. I I, won't, I, don't I almost want to take the over. Where is Micah Parsons out? I don't know. I almost want to take the over, though. I mean, I don't hate that. Um, I I need CD Lamb to bounce back at some point. I mean, he's he's did he not bounce back last week? Yeah, I guess you're right. But I need like one of those big CD Lamb games in like a in a big situation, like a big like Sunday night game, like everybody's watching Thursday night games always like suck and you're playing the giants like that sucks i need to see him do it against like a good defense then i'll know he's officially back fair um i think yeah i mean i'm looking through this too and i had a hard time like trying to figure out a lot of these games are just like not great like this bears panthers game I don't that doesn't move the needle for me. Dolphins Patriots like the Dolphins need to figure out what's happening at the quarterback position before I they they're know even worth talking about. But like they know what's happening at their quarter. Like this isn't a shock. Like they don't oh, have no. their quarterbacks hurt. Like there's really there's not much to I don't think that there's like much to talk about there. Like their quarterbacks hurt. I know, I know. And yeah. it's either are you going to keep him around or are you going to actually go out there and try and find someone else? Because if you're the Dolphins, you need to let all these guys, like you're starting to see these guys get frustrated and they just lost to Jalen Phillips again, I believe, right? Yeah, he's done. I, I, what do you want them to do at a quarterback from a quarterback perspective? Like there's I've, like there's I, there's nothing you can do. Trade for Joe Flacco. Uh, he, they need him too. Yeah, I think I think Anthony Richardson's going to play this week. Actually, but still, they still need him. Anthony Richardson's a liability. No, I just don't think trade like, for um like trade, trade Atlanta Lance. for Michael Pan for Michael Penix. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> like, I just don't like. I don't know, like what like they're supposed to do in a, a situation. Like, they're just they're fucked until week eight. That's yeah. that's what's wrong. Yeah, it's gonna suck. But it's also going to be really good because um, I have them to miss the playoffs. And if they just keep losing, then it's hard to make the playoffs when you lose games. Very true. All right. Okay. That's all I got. Week five, million dollar picks. I I did my math wrong. Uh, I hit on the Titans on Monday night, as did you. Uh, My total right now is at 1.695. Uh, million dollars. I'm I'm plus six hundred k on the year, a little over that. Um, absolutely crushed it last week. So my I'm just gonna read through my picks. Uh, first pick Jets money line plus one thirty, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars when three hundred twenty five k. Bijan Robinson touchdown on Thursday night football. I hit the past two weeks on Thursday night football touchdowns, a hundred k to win $76,923.08. The cards plus seven and a half at 100K to win $86,000.52. Um, cards in a bounce back spot, seven and a half points, a little too much. I want to sprinkle their money line. I'm not going to. And then my last pick will be the Bills money line. 250k to win 231,000 dollars, 481 dollars and 48 cents. So those are my four big picks for this week. Jets money line, cards seven and a half, Bijan Robinson touchdown, and the Bills money line to continue the scorching hot million dollar picks for Stephen Boris. Go ahead. 
you mentioned uh, taking the Cardinals spread. I did want to ask you, do you think that the Cardinals and like the Steelers are those two teams where like they just play better as underdogs? No, I just think that like, I, I, I said this, I said this the other night, if you watched the Cardinals game, it was very misleading. The final score was extremely misleading. And I think that seven and a half is absolutely ridiculous. I think that it should be closer to like three and a half, maybe like the five, like four and a half, five range. But if you watch the commanders game last week, they screwed themselves. And if you didn't watch the game and looked at the final score in the box score, you're saying Kyler Murray sucks. He didn't get the ball to Marvin Harris Jr. Didn't run the ball efficiently. Their defense sucked. But in reality, they were giving them entirely short fields and making dumb mistakes from a penalty perspective. And that's really why it got as bad as it did. What about so, the Steelers? I, I just think the Steelers aren't good. It always feels like they play better when they're not the favorite. When they're home underdogs, I know that there's like yeah. some crazy record or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think it matters. I don't know what that means. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, what does that mean? Like, why, like, if they're home underdogs, like, they're just going to play better football? Like, I don't know what that means, really. They're 11-7 and seven as home underdogs since 2016. So, if you're betting on the Steelers, maybe don't. Because they're a yeah, favorite. Don't. Um, but, okay. So, right now, for my, my picks, I sit at... Nine hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred fifty-one dollars and and seventy cents. Um, I did hit on the Titans money line, like you said. Um, so I'm just under a million for the year. Um, Broke. My, I know my first pick is the Seahawks money line parlayed with the with an alternate under a forty-seven and a half for the Vikings Jets at eighty-five k to win sixty-five k. Um, I think a big Seahawks bounce back after after uh, losing on um on monday night uh i've got jamar chase touchdown against the ravens um i don't know what the line is yet but i have 105k on that uh my next one here i've got a three-team parlay of the bills the bucks and the patriots 30k to win two hundred four thousand. $41.27. And then my last one is two more alternate unders. Dolphins Pats under 46 and a half. Raiders Broncos under 43 and a half. 175K to win $91,613.25. Cool. We're going for it this week. Um okay, those are million dollar picks for week five. Uh, I want to close out by talking about uh, some college football. Uh, I saw somebody today. First off, listen, I'm not coming at you. Like Penn State fans sometimes are so Suck. delusional. It's insane. I, know. I saw aware. somebody today under one of the state media posts be like, <laughs> offense is having fun. Defense is playing well. Drew Aller's a Heisman quarterback. Like I was like, Drew Aller's a Heisman quarterback. No, he's not. Who, who I, said this? I, some dude, obviously. It's like some old dude that loves Penn State, obviously. I guess what I wanted to get, because we haven't talked about it like literally at all, is when I watched the Patriots, not the Patriots, when I watched the, 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 uh, when I watched Penn State, they remind me of like, Honestly, like kind of like the Steelers almost or like a team like yeah, like an like old that, school football team like with like a couple team. wrinkles of new uh yeah. flares on offense. Yeah, and it seems like it always seem they always start off slow, they always seem disjointed, they never are like that can their their wins aren't ever like as convicting as they should be against um, better teams. Like against a, like a against lower team. teams, even like I don't think that they ever beat like I, I mean they were 17 and a half point favorites against Illinois, and Illinois shot themselves in the foot with the pick six at the end, obviously made the score a little bit further away than what it should have been. 
They didn't cover that 17 and a half points. Um, they obviously almost lost to Kent State. Like, just some. No, that I was just, Bowling Green. Bowling Green. I just want to hear some, like, your opinion. Like, obviously, first off, Abdul Carter's really good at football. Like, newsflash, their defense is really good. Always um, is. And, and obviously, they have two really great running backs. But when I watch Drew Aller, I don't see it. And I don't know if I'm a hater or I'm wrong and I'm open to both of those things. But when I hear like, like I see like Hackenberg being like, Oh, that first throw that he made against Illinois last week. Like I knew he was going to cook. And I'm like, well, Drew Aller didn't cook the entire game. Like he makes a few good throws, but like, I'm, I don't see it with him the way that he gets hyped up amongst the Penn state media. Yeah. I mean, you said Christian Hackenberg. I think Drew Aller and Christian Hackenberg are the same player. Um, wow. They both came out of high school, <laughs> very high, uh, highly ranked recruits. Like they both have like all of the physical tools to play in the NFL. Both big guys, what both like six, four, both had really strong arms. Um, I think Drew probably moves better, a little bit better than Christian Hackenberg did, but like, they look to me as the same football player at Penn State. Um, they both show flashes of, of really, really high-level throws, um, but can be inconsistent at times. Drew Aller's not a Heisman Trophy quarterback. Um, I think he can be good in the NFL. I think he has the tools to do so. Um, I think he needs to develop a lot more still. Um, but... Until I see something else from Penn State that tells me otherwise, i.e., they end up beating an Ohio State, or say they go out there and they they stomp on USC, like legitimately stomp on USC, which I don't think that happens either. Um, it's going to be this. I can't flip my opinion on Penn State from this is the same old Penn State team as years past, I think their offense is better and has looked better than um, last year. I think Drew Allar looks better than he did last year. He looks more comfortable, but I still think he's like a year away from if he were to stay, I would feel a lot better about Penn state being able to beat one of these bigger name teams down the road than I do this year. Um, Ultimately, what it will come down to is can he make a few big plays when he needs to and not turn the football over? Because I think the defense is legit, but in years past, we've seen the defense play really well, and then it gets to a point where there's just zero offensive production, and the defense ends up being out there for 45 minutes during a game. And that's not sustainable when you're playing up against an Ohio State team, when you're playing up against an, a former Michigan team, um, and expect you can't go out there and expect to win a football game like that. Um, so until proven otherwise, I'm just going to enjoy the wins, but I can't sit here and say that I think they're going to go out there and beat Ohio State this year. I can't say that I think that they they end up in a playoff game that they'll beat Alabama this year. I don't think they'd beat Georgia. Um, I don't think they'd beat Oregon, and I don't think they'd beat Texas with uh, Quinn Ewers, but those those few teams are just, like, in a different class. Like, I think outside of that group of, like, six teams, like, Penn State's right there, but there's a distinct difference between those six teams and Penn State. And uh, there has been. I mean, for the last – outside of Texas – it's pretty much been those few teams that have been like the dominant forces in the, in college football replace Clemson with Texas in years past. But you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? Yeah. I just think the Penn state media, like legitimately just kind of like needs to be stopped. Like, it's just like it, it, until like I say this all the time, Penn state is like completely fine with being like above average, which is cool. Like good, but like they're not, like serious about like winning championships. Like that's not Penn state football. It's like winning the big 10 going and winning a college football, like a national championship. That's just like not uh, winning the playoff. My bad. Like 
that's just like not what Penn State's about. Um, and I, you know me, I love betting on college football. I literally bet on every game from 12 o'clock until fucking midnight. And Penn State is an auto fade every week. Like anytime, like it's like, like I saw that the line was, it got up to 18 and a half one point against Illinois. That's an auto bet for me because Penn State, their games are just too close. The only thing that you have to pretty much worry about is like if their defense turns up and gets a turnover and they have a short Correct. Field. Correct. Um, but like other than that, like the games are going to be close. So um, I th- even think this week they have a long spread. Um, I'm probably going to take the underdog. Um, the only reason I would advise against the underdog is because their quarterback is banged up and is going to try and play. Um, and and they're they're. Their running defense, UCLA's rushing defense is like one of the worst in the country and running the football is like the best thing that Penn State does. Yeah, but he's a fighter. He is. Like if Drew, like Drew Aller would be sitting this game out. For sure. Um, I wanted to say, yeah, I want to say one other thing about like partially, I don't think Penn State will cross over until that, into that threshold of the Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia. I mean, shit. Even like yeah, or like Oregon. I was going to say Tennessee, but they haven't gotten there yet. They were there like back in the day, but they haven't jumped there yet, but they're definitely trending in the right direction with um with this kid they have a quarterback, but um I was going to say they won't get into that threshold until they start taking this NIL situation more seriously. Um, the NIL money that's going into those teams that are above Penn State is just like absurd. Um, like I'm looking at the top 15. Um, what was the NIL before? Before NIL, I don't have one. I'm just I'm saying just, I, I don't. I don't this have. Is an very, they this just, is just weren't on, as good. This is just on par. Like like even I agree with you. They definitely should probably spend more money. And NIL, my my big c- concern is just like I just don't think James Franklin and whatever staff he ever has in there are great at developing quarterbacks to be the yeah. guy, like the guy. And like I don't think that we'll ever like maybe we will, but I just like don't foresee like the hot like a a, a Gillen Dabriel, um like being like i want to go and play in happy valley over playing like in oregon like i just think that we went we both went to penn it's a state. tough sell it's a tough sell we both went to it penn comes state. down to penn state in oregon <laughs> it's great for what it is but there's obviously other destinations in america that are a lot better than state college pennsylvania it's really tough to sell somebody going to penn state versus going to Miami if they're both getting offered the same amount of money in NIL deal. Um, there's not a single doubt in my mind. Or um, even like even like one of these other teams, like I'm looking at Old Miss. I mean, I know they just lost, but they're sixth in NIL. I mean, that's... They're not scared. I, they're not scared at all. Florida State, they're a bunch of shitters, but... Yeah, they suck. <laughs> still... Um, like Nebraska, like Nebraska got Dylan Riola, who is probably going to end up being one of the be- sorry, Patrick Mahomes. All right, um, thank you. <laughs> they, sorry, they ended up getting him, and he's probably going to end up being the best quarterback, like better than any quarterback that Penn State has had since Daryl Clark. No doubt, like, no doubt. He's good, he's like a he's actually yeah. good. I hate him, but he's good, yeah, like. Like, he's really good. Like, there's really not much more to say about it. And it's crazy to think that, like, Penn State, like, Trace McSorley was their best QB, like, in the last 50, 20 years. Like, Trace that's McSorley a problem. And Sean Clifford. That is a problem. Like, it's like, it's just crazy. So they, they do a good job of churning offensive linemen into the league. They probably put an offensive lineman in the NFL every year. They probably they put at least two to three defensive players in the N- at least two to three defensive guys in the NFL every year. They're going to have two running backs in the NFL this year. Yeah, and 
it's just crazy that they just can't have that same type of success at the quarterback position. They're not about it. But They're not. Last thing. They need to get I'm, Coach Contafio in there. Coach Contafio and Andrew Ford and Adam if, Brenneman. If you guys are listening, Coach Contafio, I know you are. Um, we, we need those SVS camps. We need direct lines to Penn State. Last thing. We need the sponsorship, too. Last thing. And I Could want to you imagine your... an SVS sponsorship? <laughs> this is brought to you by SVS, fo- SVS football camps. Jake um, Bowen, you freaking idiot. Dude, I mean, there's some serious talent that's been pumped out of there. Andrew Ford, Chad Henney. Um, there's never probably forget. A, a long Tommy DeVito. Um, never forget. Last thing that I want to say, and then, and then we can wrap up. Oh, he has Pogue. I have maybe the hottest take. It's not really a hot take. I don't, I usually don't do this, but. I want to get your reaction to this is Jalen Milrow will be the number one pick in this year's draft. And I listened to Rosillo and McShay talk about this, I heard this. Yep. the other day. And when they said it, it just made all the sense, like in the entire world. Like, I think the case that was made was pretty much like he's big, fast, strong. He does things on a football field that, legitimately like no one else can do from an athleticism standpoint. He's fast as shit. He's strong. Um, he's really fun to watch. Um, and his, his inconsistencies is just like throwing the football, which is the most important part. Damn, that's a really tough inconsistency. <laughs> but, to have. but we w- literally watched this happen yeah. every single year at the quarterback position where there's a guy who has, all of the tools of like freak athleticism and Correct. they are always at on the top of everyone's board. Cause he's going to go to the combine and be fast, jump out the yeah. gym, make crazy throws against air and shorts and a helmet because yeah, anybody like, like anybody can, but like when a, a hyper athlete does it, it looks way cooler. So, like Anthony Richardson, literally. like Anthony Richardson. So, I wanted to see one. I wanted to echo that because I'm Sam. I'm going to stand with both of them in solidarity and also claim that take of, I think J- Jalen Milrow gets taken one overall first quarterback off the board in this upcoming draft. And I wanted to one, get your reaction on that. And two, what do you think of Jalen Milrow? Um, I don't think that that's insane. I think the only way that he like doesn't end up going number one is if, um, like the Patriots end up getting a number one pick because I think they'll end up going offensive lineman. Um, do you trade back? All right, we're, we're talking potentially, draft. yeah, potentially. Now we're talking draft. <laughs> like, my, it, bad, my bad. If, if there is a team that has the first overall pick that is looking to get a quarterback, I can totally see that happening. Yeah, for the reasons that you mentioned, where you go to the combine and <laughs> You he'll absolutely do numbers there. Um, I think he's probably going to end up winning the Heisman this year if he continues playing the way that he does. So add that to his resume. Um, he played in the national championship last year, and I think he's good enough. And I think we saw just how good this Alabama team is over the past weekend to say, oh, yeah, they can win a national championship as well. Um, and every NFL team thinks that they are the greatest at developing a quarterback. And even if there are things that he needs to work on, an NFL team will take a chance on him because of how electric he can be in these other areas. Um, He's probably a thicker pause Lamar Jackson. Yeah, literally. Um, And that's extremely tough to replicate. And that's extremely tough to like find else, like find elsewhere, basically. Right. Um, when he, takes- I could, so I could see it. I could see it happening. Um, I think he, like I said, I think he wins the Heisman. That just boosts his stock, and I think he's going to play really do a great job at the combine and test super well. So, like, as long as he doesn't go out there and just like completely crumble the rest of the college football season, um, I can totally see him getting picked number one overall. Bro, some some uh, against Georgia this past week, like the one play where he broke off down the sideline and like legit took off running, like I yeah. was like, 
oh my gosh, this dude's so fast. And like, obviously the 17 year old wide receiver made the play at the end of the game, which was like literally one of the craziest plays I've ever seen in my life. He's a baller. Sick. That was sick. Uh, um, but yeah, I just wanted to see what you thought about that. Cause I heard them talk about it and I was literally like, that is 150% going to be what, what happens this year. Cause yeah. there's the guys at the top of the board. There some are good, but none of them are like, none, none of, of them, them have that like, superstar. Yeah, to, like it to them. Like Carson Beck is up there, but he looked like shit. Shadur Sanders is up there. I don't really like. I think Shadur's good, and I think he throws the football better than Jalen Milrow. But like, I don't think he's anywhere close to athletic as he is. He also doesn't have nearly. He didn't have nearly as good of an offensive line. So like, I don't think we've fully seen the um, Shadur Sanders potential. Um, sure. Drew Aller's up there, but he's not going to be anywhere. Like he's not going to be top declare? fifteen. Pick. I don't know. I, I'm seeing like he's on draft boards as like one of the top quarterbacks coming out. Man, I will. I, listen, I that if if Drew Aller declares in my head, I mean, unless if he goes on an absolute tear for the rest of the season. But if he plays the way that he's been playing, oh, Quinn Ewers too. Sorry, yeah, Quinn Ewers. If he plays the way that he's been playing this this season, I feel like he should stay in school one, one more year. I mean, I agree with you. Um, on like he puts together good stats. Like if you look at his season in totality last year, he threw two interceptions, and I mean on paper that's phenomenal, but if you're watching him game to game, it's like, okay. And they could have just been the offense that they were running. And they don't put him in situations to throw picks. Like they weren't, they didn't, they didn't push the football down the field at all last year. And they're doing it more this year, but, um, and I expect him to throw probably more than two interceptions, but on paper, like he'll put together like a 3000 yard passing season, 20 passing TDs and probably less than like five interceptions. And that's amazing on paper. Um, And at his size and arm strength, like that is what will get you drafted. Weirdest thing ever. And I don't know why I think like this. If you ever have another quarterback coming into the game while you're playing quarterback for your team, I hate it. That's as bad. That's bad vibes. It's a bad sign. There's no reason any elite quarterback in college football is not ever having another quarterback out of the field come in and run like a zone read play or something like that. Like it's just like, and like I said, Drew Aller, like when you're watching the games, there's times where you're just like, do they not trust him to throw the football here or like what's going on? So Drew Aller is, is Jared Goff in the NFL. That's a ceiling. I think that's, that's his pretty- best absolute. That's the absolute best player that Drew Aller could be in the NFL. Okay. All right. Listen, and I don't. Been- I don't think that. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing. But like, because I think Jared Goff is a good NFL quarterback. But like, that is everything goes right for Drew Aller from here on out, and you get Jared Goff. Listen, I've I've been with Drew. Good kid. Nice guy. Not trying to roast him like pers- on a personal level, but like, I don't think that's a bad thing to say that his absolute best is Jared golf. No, not at all. All right. Well, Hey, that's all I have today, but yeah, I, I had to talk some college football because there's so much going on. There's way more, but those are just a few things. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we mixed that in there. I've been deprived of it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. All right, chief. All right. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Are you throwing the, uh, yeah, let's- the-